This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. The BYU hitters will now be facing a new Gonzaga pitcher here in the top of the seventh inning, which I know Tuck, oh, is it, great news for you. I just got done doing some push-ups and jumping jacks <laughs> in here because I'm so excited he's out of there. Mac Lardner's day is done, and he was fantastic. Six innings pitched, one hit, two walks, nine strikeouts. Fantastic start for Mac Lardner. Gives way to number 18, Daniel Naughton. He's a right-handed pitcher. He's six feet, 185-pound sophomore from Pendleton, Oregon. And the first batter he will face is the Cougar left fielder, Hayden Latham. Hayden is flied out and grounded out. Well, Naughton is a power righty, 92, 93-mile-an-hour guy. Nice to see something different here. Looks like when he throws his breaking ball, you can actually see slows down a little bit, so he might be able to tip that and be able to sit back on it. Attack that fastball. Swing and a drive. That ball crushed to center field. Over hey, the head of the center fielder, Josh Bristian. Let's and go. Hayden Latham gets BYU on the board with a solo shot. Cougars on top, one to nothing. Welcome to Division One Baseball and to the BYU Cougar faithful, Hayden Latham. Fantastic. What did I say? Get on the fastball. My friend, you kept talking about yes. Lardner being a BYU killer. Yes. The first batter from the yes. pitcher that first replaces pitch. him. First and pitch. he takes him deep. <laughs> oh, and that ball was probably 10 feet off the ground the whole entire way. The ball was smashed. I was not sure that had the distance. I thought it was going to go over the center fielder's head and roll to the wall, and it just kept carrying. That ball was on a line over 400 feet. On a line. Big time stick there, Hayden. Good piece. BYU gets its second hit. Both teams with two hits, but the most important stat is BYU has one run on the solo home run for Hayden Latham. And now Mitch McIntyre with the swing and a fly ball to left field. Maktoff there for the first out. And that that retires Mitch McIntyre. Good swing there by Mitch. BYU on top, one nothing here in the top of the seventh inning. Fly out now by Mitch McIntyre, bringing in the first baseman, Austin Deming. Deming is grounded out and struck out in his two previous plate appearances. Ryan Sapiti on deck. There's one out, nobody on. Deming looks at ball one. Welcome to the game, Daniel Naughton. Hayden Latham takes him deep. The 1-0 pitch to Deming. Thought about swinging, able to hold up. Looks at ball two. You got to wonder if you're not, in, you come in, first pitch you throw is taken deep. That's whether or not a you're bit, yeah. it maybe, maybe shaky oh, yeah. a little bit. The 2-0 pitch to Deming. Hefty swing and a miss on a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Yeah, he wasn't going to let that one be hit. He, You could just say, see in his body language and the way he grunted after that that he's like, all right, it's the first fastball I've thrown since the home run. I'm going to throw as hard as I can and see what happens. The 2-1 pitch to Deming gets the outside corner. Ball. Evens the count, two balls and two strikes. Ball looks a little bit up right there. It's a tough pitch. Good take by Deming. Now he's got a battle because he can go back to that slider now. Naughton has worked the count even. Two balls and two strikes. One out, nobody on. Austin Dimming the batter. The 2-2 pitch. Line ball, pa- yes, line sir. drive past the second baseman and into right field. And Austin Dimming picks up his first base hit of the season. That's now three base hits for the Cougars today. And with one out, BYU has a runner on first. Yeah, good piece right there by Dimming. Got the slider. Drove it the other way. Looks like Coach Littlewood's going to call on Brian Call to come in and pinch hit the left-handed hitter. Brian's had a really, really good early spring in, in BP in our scrimmages. He's been one of our best hitters. And so with them starting a lefty, you know, didn't give him a chance to start in this game, but I knew Coach would try to go to him as soon as they brought in a right-hander because he's put together some really, really good at-bats for us. Brian Call will replace Ryan Sapiti. Hitting sixth in the BYU lineup. 
Brian, a sophomore, looks at strike one from Naughton. Deming at first, one out, quick throw over to first, and Austin able to get back. Nice awareness there by Austin. One thing that Brian's been really good at, especially early this spring, has been just grinding out at bats, making the pitcher work, and when he puts the swing on it, he's really putting together some really good swings. Swing and a miss. Now 0-2 to call. Naughton with another 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Deming at first, call at the plate. One out. The 0-2 pitch from Naughton delivers. Swing and a pop-up. The shortstop backs up. Yake makes the catch, and now it's two away as Brian Call is retired for the second out here in the top of the seventh. That'll bring the catcher, Abe Valdez, to the plate. Abe has flied out to center field. and walked. Well, you know, if you look at Abe, Abe's stats last year, a lot of his at-bats, you know, he had some midweek starts and things like that, but most of his at-bats came pinch hits late in the game. And he had some big-time hits for us, right? I remember big a really big hits. double against Lamar last year. Yeah, I mean, some big-time hits. So this is the time you expect him to, to really come through for a team. First pitch to Valdez outside for ball one. The situation for Abe. Runner on first and two outs. BYU leading one nothing, Off the bat of Hayden Latham, a solo home run. It's the Cougars on top here in the top of the seventh. The 1-0 pitch to Valdez, swing and a foul straight back. One ball and one strike. The sun has set. Here in Surprise, Arizona, the lights are on here at Surprise Stadium. Again, the spring training home of the Kansas City Royals and the Texas Rangers. Throw over to first, and they got Austin Deming. It looked like he may have touched the bag before the tag, but the first base umpire says he was out. And the Cougars... Get the lead off the home run from Hayden Latham, but they are retired in the top of the seventh. We head to the bottom of the seventh. BYU won nothing on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. For the first time today, Justin Sterner takes the mound with a lead. BYU leading one nothing, heading to the bottom of the seventh. Hayden Latham leading off the top of the seventh with a solo home run. BYU with its first lead of the game and the season. Sterner back out on the mound. Facing Tyler Rando. Rando takes strike one. Rando is struck out and has a base hit. One of the two hits that the Bulldogs have today. The 0-1 pitch from Justin. Line drive into center field. McIntyre able to run up on it. It'll be a base hit for Rando. It's his second base hit of the game. He's got two of the three hits for the Zags today. And yeah, for the first little... time today, the Zags have the leadoff man on. Yeah, too good of a slider right there for Sterner. That one was uh, elevated where he just basically one-handed that. You know, a little line drive flare over second for a leadoff single. You're going to have a pinch runner, too. It's like Mason. Uh, Alex, Alex Brenner uh -huh. is going to come in and be the runner at first base. It'll be interesting to see here if they decide to if they decide to uh, to bunt with Sullivan, power guy, right? Also a guy that can hit, strike out a ton, and grant him a double play. It'll be interesting to see if they bunt right here to try to get the tie and run to second. You know, we're in those that cat and mouse part of the last three innings of the game, right, in a one-run ball game. Well, and head coach Mike Littlewood is out on the mound. The infield has come in talking to Sterner, and they're probably going over that exact topic right now on how to, how to handle Ryan Sullivan. 
He yeah. struck out looking and is flied out to sh the shortstop. A lot of this is a young team late in the game. You want to make sure that uh, your defense is covered as far as who's got bunts and just making sure everything's set exactly how you want it. The conference on the mound is over. Defense back in their positions. Head coach Michael Littlewood back in the BYU dugout. And now Sterner toeing the rubber. Getting ready to face Ryan Sullivan. As we mentioned, 0 for 2. Strikeout looking and flight out to the shortstop. But now comes to the plate with a runner on first and nobody out. The first pitch to Sullivan. Taken for strike one. Sullivan thought that was low. Good spot there by Sterner. Brenner had a fairly large lead, too. That could hit and run. A little bunt and run. The Zags like to force the action. The 0-1 pitch from Sterner on its way to Sullivan. Swing and a foul Good. off to the right side. Out of play. Evens the counter. Excuse me. Now 0-2 to Ryan Sullivan. This is where you have to be really good if you're a Sterner, right? It's You've got pitches to play with here. You go something off speed? Yeah, you, you try and attack him? If, if I'm Sterner, I throw the slider away, right? A swing and miss away pitch. A non-hittable pitch here. and See if he can uh, waver at it. Brenner on first. He's a pinch runner. Sterner ahead 0-2 on Sullivan. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and another foul. That went right at him. In, inside fastball right at him. 92 mile an hour fastball. BYU leading 1 0. Hayden Latham playing left field. Hit a solo home run on the top of the seventh. And it's given BYU the 1 0 lead. The 0 2 pitch from Justin. Swing and a miss. Justin Sterner. His seventh strikeout of the evening for the first out here in the bottom of the seventh, and that's a big out with a runner on first. Absolutely. Just rocked back and fired right there and says, you know what? My best first, your best. I'm going to throw it right by you, and he did that. Looking for a little double play ball right here. That's what we want. The catcher, Stephen Lund, at the plate. He's flied out and struck out. One out in the first pitch. High for ball one. Abe thought about backpicking right there. It's a big. Brenner had a huge secondary there at first. This is really the first pressure that Justin Sterner has had it all is. day. Yep. That was the first first leadoff hitter that's gotten on that's in the right. game, right? Yep. His other hits were with two outs, nobody on. 1-0 pitch from Sterner on its way to Lund. Way outside and a nice block. Yeah, great job, Abe. By Abe Valdez. And now Sterner behind the hitter. Two balls and no strikes. And Abe's going to walk the ball out to Sterner, who's moved up closer to home plate. And they're having a little bit of a conversation here. I don't know if they got crossed up on that one. Abe still talking with Sterner. Both guys with their gloves over their mouths. About halfway between home plate and the pitcher's mound. Conversation's over. Sterner heading back to the mound and Valdez back behind the plate. one nothing BYU. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Runner on first, one out. Both teams with three hits. Sterner's given up three hits and has seven strikeouts. No walks so far for Justin. Might see action right here, a little hit and run. The 2-0 pitch. To Lund on its way inside for strike one. Nice job there by Justin Sterner to get the pitch he wanted. Yep. Two balls and a strike now to Lund. Lund flied out to center in the second inning, struck out in the fifth. The count two and one. Big lead. And a throw over, and off. now they got. Oh my! It looked goodness. like they had Brenner, but first base umpire says he got back in time. That was a late jump by Brenner, and it looked like Sterner was going to get him. 
I was about ready to call him out. When I saw the safe sign, I was a little surprised. Yeah, caught him leaning, just uh, threw that ball a little bit too high. The count still 2-1 to Lund. 2-1 pitch from Sterner. Line drive into center field, and Brenner is going to go first to third on the base hit. McIntyre bobbles the ball a little bit, but does not allow Lund to get to second. So it's a base hit for Steven Lund. On the base hit, Brenner goes first to third. And now with one out, here in the bottom of the seventh, the Zags threatening with runners on the corners and one out. And this is a spot where you've seen Coach Maktoff in the past do a safety squeeze, a suicide squeeze bunt to try to tie this game up. He'll do a hit and run action with the guy at first trying to move and get a ground ball to, to where they can't double up to get out of the inning and score that run. There's a lot of things that you might see the Zags do here, and it looks like Head coach Mike Littlewood's going to make a call to the bullpen, and that's going to be it for Justin Sterner. Fantastic outing so far for Justin. We'll take a break, come back, and let you know who's coming in to pitch for the Cougars here in the bottom of the seventh on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Jason Shepard. Reed McLaughlin is the new pitcher for the BYU Cougars. The 5'10", 165-pound sophomore from nearby Scottsdale. I say nearby. It still take you 45 minutes to get there from where we are. Reed pitched very well last season as a freshman for BYU. This is a guy that the coaches have the utmost respect and confidence in for what he was able to do. And he's on, on the radar of a lot of guys. Yeah, Reed's an elite right, uh, strike thrower. Pounds his own in and out, throws a slider, really can spot up that fastball where he wants, and he kind of throws cross body a little bit, so it's hard for the pitchers to pick it up. He's 89, 91, and he's used to these spots, right? Yep. Justin Sterner's day is done, six and a third, giving up four hits, seven strikeouts, but again, he is responsible for the runners on the corners. It's one out, runner at first, runner at third. Mason Marinko will be the first batter that McLaughlin will face. Marenko is flied out to right field and struck out. So he's 0 for 2. The Zags out hitting BYU 4 to 3. BYU still leading 1 0. Cooper's trying to get out of the bottom of the seventh with that 1 0 lead. The first pitch, yep. and that's a bunt. We'll go foul down the first base side. Like you called it. About. Yes, that safety squeeze, right? They like that. And Reed's an athlete. Reed was recruited as a two-way athlete, as a shortstop and a pitcher. And he decided that I'd rather pitch, that I had a better role there. And so he's a guy you can trust to field the bunt. But uh, you knew that would happen, and it would be surprised if they tried again. No balls, one strike, one out. Runners on the corners for the Zags here in the bottom of the seventh. McLaughlin, the new pitcher for BYU, taking over for Justin Sterner. Facing Mason Marenko. The 0-1 pitch to Mason. Swing and a foul out of play. McLaughlin now ahead. No balls and two strikes. And what a big opportunity this would be. Well, you got him 0-2, Shep. you got to finish him. You need, the, you need a ground ball double play, an infield pop-up, or the strikeout right here. Any three of those things. You do not want anything in the outfield. Do your job right here. Your best pitch right here, Reed. Reed ahead 0-2. That's why Coach brings you into this spot right here. Don't, don't, don't do it. Timeout called by Valdez. He looked into the dugout, making sure they had the right signs. Delivers those signs to McLaughlin. Yeah, a little first and third sign here to make sure if they do like a delayed still or, or a still stop, trying to still a run here. Making sure they know who's got what area covered. Here we go, Reed. 0-2 pitch from McLaughlin. On its way. A swing and a line drive is going to get down into right field. It's going to be an RBI single for Mason Marinko. And we're all tied up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. One run apiece. Well, you went fastball, fastball to get ahead. And then went to the slider right there and... 
with the slider, he was able to just nice and easy flare down the right field line, one hopper to Jelly, and drives in the run. And they got first and second now with one out. So the Zags got something rolling here. Both teams getting a run here in the seventh inning. BYU on a solo home run from Latham. And now an RBI from Mason Marenko, an RBI single. Scores the Zags' first run. We're all tied up. Still one out. Reed's first pitch to Gabe Hughes called strike one. Now at this point, you just got to limit the damage and try and get out of the inning. No worse than being tied heading to the top of the eighth. Runners on first and second and one out. Zags with five hits, BYU with three. No one pitch taken by Hughes for strike two. And once again, Reed ahead. No balls and two strikes. Hughes has struck out and had a base hit in the fifth. That run, the 0-2 pitch, ground ball. Third baseman over to first. Nice job there by Zach Peterson to glove it, get the out at first. The runners do advance now with two outs. Have runners at second and third. Yeah, that's a big spot. That's a big pitch right there because Reed threw a perfect pitch, right? And he's able just to barely get a piece of it and roll it over to the six hole. Peterson at third cuts it off, gets the out, but both guys get to advance. So now you have the go ahead run at third and the add on run at second here with two outs. This is where you really have to bear down and leave those runners there right now. An earned run that scored here in the bottom of the seventh attributed to Justin Sterner. That's going to be a ground ball from Jack Maktoff to Pintar. Great job. Pintar to first, and the Cougars do limit the damage. The Zags get a run in the bottom of the seventh, and we head to the top of the eighth, all tied up at one apiece on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, all the scoring in this game has come in the seventh inning. BYU picked up a solo home run in the top of the seventh to go up 1-0. The Zags hit an RBI single in the bottom of the seventh to tie the game up. We're now in the top of the eighth. Zag pitcher Daniel Naughton out for his second inning of work. He'll face BYU catcher Abe Valdez. First pitch to Abe in the dirt for ball one. You know, it's interesting. The Zags, they, they pitch... They pitch us so different than most teams. They're really breaking ball heavy. They're not afraid to throw it. They love throwing that slider, curveball, changeup, first pitch. The 1-0 pitch to Abe. Inside, but home plate umpire said it hit the corner of the zone. One ball and one strike. And almost hit his jersey, too. Yeah, that looked inside to me. And granted, we're off just to the left of home plate, but it still looked inside. The 1-1 pitch to Abe. Low for ball two. One thing I hate about these high press boxes, it's really hard to see depth up and down, right? It's really hard. We'll wait till the second game of our doubleheader tomorrow where we're even further away. Yeah. BYU with a doubleheader against New Mexico tomorrow. The 2-1 pitch to Valdez. Ground ball past the third baseman and into left field. And Abe Valdez has a leadoff single in the top of the eighth inning. Nicely done there, Abe. Just battled right there. Snuck a ball through the six hole. Good effort by the third baseman. Yeah, Harris made a diving attempt, but yeah. it was just really great hit by Abe. Perfectly placed. Interesting to see what Coach Littlewood goes with here. You'd, we, like, you'd like to pinch run for Abe if you could, but he's your starting catcher, so it makes it tough. We've right? already seen Andrew Pintar bunt in this game. He bunt single. First pitch from Naughton is low for ball one. Will we see another bunt attempt by the freshman second baseman? Andrew is, again, with a bunt single. He's picked off and then struck out looking. His third plate appearance. The 1-0 pitch to Andrew. Showed bunt, able to pull it back. Called ball two. Nobody out. Lead-off single here in the top of the eighth by Valdez. Has Abe on first and nobody out. Big spot here for the freshman. 2-0 count. 
The 2-0 pitch to Andrew. A swing. Good down. And that ball's hit deep into left field. It will get down. And Valdez is going to be at third. They're going to hold him up. And that's a double by Andrew Pintar. And with nobody out, the Cougars in business with runners on second and third. Absolutely. 2-0 count. Took off the bunt that he had, that he had, that he had called the pitch before. Got a fastball in the inner half and just drives it down the left field line. Anybody else on our team is at first base but Abe, and he scores a run there. But because it's no outs, you don't take that chance. You just say second and third with nobody outs, brings up Peterson. Well, and Maktoff was playing closer to left center. He was, yeah. And he wasn't even close to the line. So that ball, as soon as it was hit, there was no doubt in my mind it was going to get down. Now we're going to have another pitcher come in for the Zags. Mark Maktoff has seen enough of Daniel Naughton, and he's made the signal. We'll take a break, come back, and let you know who the Cougars will face. BYU in business with runners on second and third. Nobody out on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Jason Shepard. Well, here's the situation. We're in the top of the eighth inning in Surprise, Arizona. The ball game is tied at one run apiece. But BYU with a fantastic opportunity. There is nobody out. Abraham Valdez is on third. Andrew Pintar is on second. BYU with two runners in scoring position with nobody out. Zach Peterson will be the batter. And he's facing a new pitcher, number 11, Michael Spellacy. He's a right-hander. He's a junior from Tacoma, Washington. He's 5'11", 185. Well, infield's playing in, Shep. No outs here. Fun time to hit if you're a hitter. The first pitch from Spellacy. It's the outside corner for strike one. That's a really good slider right there. My goodness. Spellacy looks like he, he pitches low to the ground. It's interesting. He like wants to fall, but then it kind of comes over the top. It's really weird. The 0-1 pitch outside. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. Lund did a fantastic job to glove that because I think Valdez was thinking about heading home. Yeah. A big time spot here. Just a line drive back up the middle. The 1-1 one, one pitch yeah. to Peterson. Taken for ball two. Belsey's got good stuff. That's a 79 mile an hour slider. A lot of tilt to it. 91 fastball he threw the pitch before. 2-1 count. Grip and rip here. Line drive right back up the middle. Outfield's playing really shallow. Infield in. A 2-1 pitch to Peterson. Ball three. The count to Zach. Three balls, one strike. And it changes everything if you're Zach. You're looking for one pitch right here. You're looking for that fastball elevator that you can do damage with. If not, you gladly take yeah, your base. Yeah, absolutely. The 3-1 pitch from Spellacy on its way. Line drive into left field. And that's going to score Abraham Valdez from third. An RBI single from the sophomore, Zach Peterson. And BYU regains the lead 2-1. to one. Yeah, that's a big-time hit right there. You get into the plus count like he did in the 3-1 count. He had to come with a fastball, and Zach was ready for it. And he hit the line drive. He actually hit it too hard, right? And so he could only score one run. But Pintar moves up to third. So now first and third with no outs and Jelich up with some speed and some damage about it. Let's turn into a big crooked inning right here. That's and, what we need. And Danny, right? this is a this is a great opportunity for him. He's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Yep. Being able to get a big hit in this in this spot will be a major confidence builder. First Ooh, pitch Petey for gotta Spellacy go. in the dirt and bounces away from Lund. And Petey thought about it. Yeah, that's a spot there, though, as if you're runner at first. As soon as you see that ball in the dirt, you've got to be thinking. And right? Zach has the speed. He does, yeah. And this is interesting now because now the infield's playing back, right? They're trying to minimize the inning. They're trying to get a double play, which, uh-oh. Throw over to first, and Zach able to get back. How close are these pickoff moves? Let's show up BYU's been picked step. off yeah. twice, and that was dangerously close to being the third time. I wouldn't be surprised here if Jellis tries to push bunt. That's how back that second baseman's plan. Huh. The 1-0 pitch. What did he try to do there, Shep? Uh, push bunt. He might have tried to. Yes, in the and dirt. I promise. I promise. I wasn't looking at the signs. I promise. Easy you. there, Houston Astros. I promise. There was no trash can banging. None of that. Okay. <laughs> I promise. Timeout called by Gonzaga. They're going to go have a conversation. Coach with Harmon's out there now. Michael Spellacy. So this is where it gets fun, right? Two zero count. 
So you know you got to come to them because you don't want to load the bases up to turn this into a huge inning. But the the Jelich speed factor, right, is what totally messes with you here because, I mean, not only can he sack bunt here to drive in a run and advance the runner to second, he can bunt for a hit. So now it would be driving in a run, and now it's first and second with nobody outs, and the inning just keeps rolling. Or what can he do? Get a fastball here and shoot a gap, hit a double or a triple, and put up two runs. So if you're Jelich right here, you're looking for your pitch, your pitch only. If it's a bunt situation, get your bunt down. If not, grip and rip here, right, and try to blow this game open. Game one of the 2020 BYU baseball season coming to you from Surprise Stadium in Surprise, Arizona. BYU leading 2-1. to one. Infield's in again. You're right. Runners on the corners, nobody out. The 2-0 pitch to Danny Jelilich. Inside for ball three. And you're right. The infield is in. They're expecting a bunt. I think they also realize, too, it's hard to, It's going to be really tough to double up Jelilich, even if he did hit a ball up the middle. 3-0 pitch outside. Danny Jelilich earns a walk. And now with nobody out, the bases are loaded. For the shortstop, Brock Watkins. Talk about an opportunity to hit, right, for the freshman. Well, this would be an opportunity for both freshmen to put their mm -hmm. imprint on this game in Absolutely. game number one. Absolutely. Pintar, Pintar, big double to get us rolling. Petey with the RBI, and now Brock has a chance to blow this thing open. Nice and simple here. Infield's in. Nice and simple. Live drive swing right here. First pitch to Watkins. Taken for strike one. You hear some claps from the Gonzaga fans. They've well, been gotta, waiting for yeah. a strike for a while. He got a chance to get ahead there. That was the key. Good speed all around. Everybody on, on the bases can run. Bases loaded. Nobody out. The 0-1 pitch to Watkins. Good. Way outside for ball one. There's no pressure here if you're Brock, right? The pressure's on the pitcher. There's no outs. You're down a run, right? All you're trying to do here is get your pitch and put a good swing on it and see what happens. The pitcher, Michael Spellacy. He's a junior facing the freshman, Brock Watkins. The pitch. Good, good. Low for ball two. That's a huge take, Shep, because that's a that's a breaking ball down that Spellacy needs you. He wants you to swing at that to get up in the count one, two. But because you take it, now you're up 2-1, and he's like, oh, i got to come back with a fastball. Be on time right here, Brock. Latham on deck. The 2-1 pitch. Watkins tried to hold up. Strike two. Count even at two balls and two strikes. It's like they called it a uh, check swing strike or foul tip. Yeah, just got a piece of it, it looked like. So full, it's 2-2. Two -two. Big spot right here where just nice and easy, put a ball back up the middle here, score a couple runs. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Watkins. Outside, ball three. The count is now full. Well, the runners aren't running, right? Because we still got no outs. You don't want to run into an out. Yeah, so you versus him. He's got to come with his best, right? You, you assume he's coming fastball. You sit dead red and you. This is where, as a freshman, you try not to overthink yeah, it. Yeah, just simplify. See fastball, hit fastball. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out, bases loaded. 3 2 pitch. Good. Swing Good. and a foul tip. Nice Good. job by Brock. To stay alive. It might have been ball four, but, hey, you can't take that chance, right? It's too close right there, down and away. You don't want him ringing you up in that situation. Yeah, if there's anything close, you've got to swing foul it off. So keep battling right here. Give yourself a chance. Outfield playing not as shallow as they were against Peterson, but they're not deep either. BYU leading 2-1 to one with an opportunity to add to it. Full count to Watkins. The pitch outside for ball four. And it's a walk and an RBI for Brock Watkins. And BYU increases its lead to 3-1. to one. I love that at-bat by Brock. He was so patient. And most freshmen, what do they do with that slider right there in a full count? They're going to swing. They're going to swing because it's close, right? But he takes it for ball four, which means he saw it well. Gets a huge RBI. And now you give a chance to your home run king of the season. I know it's the first it's, game. It's, but There's just one, but you you're right. got a chance for your three-hole hitter right here to really really extend this lead right here base is loaded nobody out BYU with a two-run lead at three to one Spellacy first pitch to Latham and right knew, down the middle you knew that slider was coming 78 mile an hour slider no there. shot he was going to throw him a first pitch fastball we saw what happened on that one his last at bat Hay Hayden has flied out 
grounded out and then has a solo home run. Put BYU on top, one nothing in the seventh inning. Line drive from Latham right at the center fielder who makes the catch for the first out. Good. Tagging from third and scoring is Zach Peterson. And BYU adds to its lead. It is now 4-1 on the sacrifice from Hayden Latham. Yeah, that's a really good swing right there. Line drive, just hit it too hard <laughs> right at him. But that's what you're looking for in that situation is to drive in another run and another RBI. Nice job, Hayden. But we've got to get – we've got to get – just even more aggressive right here. Mitch needs to put on a big swing right here, Shep. Let's four to one is nice, but I like six, seven to one. It's time to get greedy. Absolutely. Greed is something that is hey, sometimes yeah. frowned upon. These are your yeah, in these, this situation, yeah. it's encouraged. These are your guys. Three, four, and five hitters. One out now. Runners on first and second. McIntyre at the plate. Spelsey delivers. That ball hit in front of home plate and bounces away from Lund. Both runners advance. Great job. Joe had a great read because the, it's an easy read from first because you know you can go, but the read from second to third when it's blocked by the catcher is you have to 100% see it away enough to where you know you're going to be safe because you're already in scoring position at second. The last thing you want to do is do what? You don't want to run into the second out at third, so really nice job. But the problem is now what does that do? They don't want like that matchup, and they – they just intentionally, intentionally walk, Mitch. walk yeah. Mitch. So he'll take the base, and now bases are loaded. I like Deming with this matchup. He's a fastball slider guy, and his, his at-bat he had last time was a slider with two strikes that he line drive to right for a single. So I like that same approach. If I'm Deming, I might even be looking slider right here because he's been throwing it first pitch. You look for it and you hammer something. Deming's certainly got the power. First pitch to Austin outside for ball one. So the, the middle infield is now backed up into double play depth. The corners are still playing in. Outfield is playing. They're not normal depth, but they're not shallow. They're kind of in between. And with Jolich speed, most likely any fly ball, he's still going to score. Looking for a ball in the outfield right here. 1-0 pitch to Deming. Swing and a miss. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. Good slider right there. BYU on top, 4-1. to one. Three runners have crossed home plate here in the top of the eighth. There's one out. Bases are loaded. Dimming at the plate. Dimming the sophomore. Defensively playing first tonight. He's a leader now, right? He went from a freshman role player last year to a guy, the four-hole hitter. 1-1 one, one pitch to Austin. Swing and a pop fly You might send near the right field up. line. Second baseman over, I makes the it. catch, and Danny Jelilich on his yes. way home and slides in head first. I love it. Jelilich being aggressive from third, scores from third base, and now BYU leads 5-1. to one. Uh, A hitter's best friend is speed because that is not a sack fly if anybody else is at third but Jelilich. But because Jelich is there, and the and, and the and the play is right there, Shep, is that because he's running away from it at second base, going towards right field to catch that ball, Jelich has the read that if you think you can get it, go. And he does. He beats it out. And so what? He's the Deming get? Oh, it's just a sack fly, right? <laughs> just a sack fly that barely got into the outfield. And now BYU taking command of this game with a 5-1 lead. Spellacy still in. Coach Maktoff probably saying, you got into this mess. We're going to let you get out of it. Well, they didn't have a chance to get a guy going, right? They had him going after um, McNaughton. Is that what it was? Not. Naughton that started this inning. Facing Brian Call now. Brian, yeah, Brian moved came into in. the lineup for yep. Ryan Sapiti as the DH. This would be a huge, huge at-bat right here if if B. Call can find a way to hit a single. Well, the other advantage of Jelilich scoring is that the runners from first and second advance. They did. So now you've got runners at second and third with two outs. The pitch to Brian Call, swing and a miss, now two and one. Yeah, everybody right there on the bases did exactly what they're supposed to. That was a fantastic executed infield sack fly is what I'll call that, all because of Jelilich's speed. It was fantastic. Come on, B. Call, big spot right here. And it was a close play, but you're right. It yeah. was the speed of Danny that allowed BYU to add its fifth run. It's 2-1 I mean, pitch outside, now 3-1. and one. It's a read there. Coach trusts Danny and says, I trust your speed. I trust your, your read, your instinct. And the minute you see that second baseman, most likely the second baseman don't have strong arms, right? And so you see him catching that ball towards right field. He's got to turn his whole yes, body. His momentum was carrying go. him away. Plus, there's no way he thought. 
three one pitch. I mean, swinging a foul for call. Now how two, many times in his career do you think a guy is has tagged up at third base? He was five feet on the other side of the dirt into the outfield. Five feet, right on a sack on a, on a pop fly. How many times do you think you see a guy tag up in his career? There, that might be the first. Yeah, he's right? not. It's not something he's used guard. to seeing. It caught him off guard. Full count to Brian Call. The three-two pitch from Spellacy. Out of boy, get down. Line drive into right field. And that's going to score two more. And two-run single Big for time. Brian Call has Big blown time. this game wide open. Big time, B. Call. Is Mitch McIntyre and Brock Watkins score, and BYU now leads 7-1 to one over the Zags. That's a big-time at-bat. 2-2 two -two count. Line drive over second for two runs. That is fantastic. Talk about an eighth inning. And what I love about it is you get the lefty out, who I will not name his name because he's a phenomenal pitcher, and he just breaks my heart constantly in Lardner. I'll name his name. He's phenomenal. But then you get to <laughs> you the pen. You can say it now. Be he's up 7-1. You get to the pen. You get to the pen. And then the offense, what do they do? They come alive, right? Hey, Lardner, we had two hits against him, right? We're sitting now at seven hits, seven runs, and it's nice to see them come alive late in this game. Valdez at the plate, swing and a foul on the right field line. Hey, and when you bat, a, when you bat through the whole entire order in one inning, uh, hitting coaches, I know Trent Pratt finally over there can excel just a little bit of excitement. Abe got this thing started in this inning. It's fantastic. The best part about this, not only is it game one, but in game one, you're getting contributions up and down the entire roster today. Absolutely. It's not just one or two guys that are – Doing the bulk. Well, Valdez looks at ball one. Now one and one Sterner to the catcher. Sterner sets the tone. Yep. Right? I, I feel bad that he gives up one run, right, on three hits and won't even qualify for the win here because of when he came out of the game because Mitch was in, right? So that's a bummer. But uh, he he just set the tone. Reed come in and got out of that inning and, and minimized it to only one run and not letting him extend that. And then we busted open in the eighth off of really good at bats, and it was good at bats. None of these are, you know, bloop pop flies. These are line drive ground balls. Guys are making contact. Yeah, absolutely. One ball, two strikes to Valdez. And speaking of making contact, that ball lined into the gap in right center, and Valdez on, is going to have a double. It, Brian Call trying to score from first, and he's tagged out at home. That will end the inning, but not before BYU played six runs in the top of the eighth inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth. BYU leading by six. It's seven to one on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. BYU broke this game wide open in the top of the eighth. They scored six runs. They lead the Zags 7-1 to one here in the bottom of the eighth. Reed McLaughlin back out to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. Fantastic top of the eighth for BYU. Such great hitting by the Cougars, really taking advantage of Michael Spellacy, who came in, and BYU just hit him up and down. Yes, they did. Great inning right there. And you have your Bulldog and Reed, freshman All-American, Returner facing Josh Bristian. Hopefully you can just get Reed. Reed, you know, only threw seven pitches in that relief appearance that he came in last inning. Hopefully uh, you can just have him throw one inning here and uh, and go to the next guy on the back end. Reed ahead, no balls and one strike. The 0-1 pitch misses outside, even the counter to ball and a strike. Because the one thing that's interesting about this, you know, he threw today, so you probably won't use him tomorrow. But if you can keep him under 40 pitches today... He easily throws for you on Monday. That's the one thing about the nice built-in day off on Sunday. The 1-1 pitch from McLaughlin to Bristian. Low for ball two. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you from Surprise, Arizona. BYU playing in the College Baseball Classic, taking on Gonzaga tonight, a doubleheader against New Mexico tomorrow, then an off day on Sunday. and We'll face the host school Oregon State on Monday. 2-1 pitch, ground ball to Pintar. Nice defensive play. Gloves it and throws to first for the out. Well, it's interesting. When we were recruiting Pintar, he's just an elite defender. I've been really impressed with his 
You've seen no nerves from him defensively yeah. in his first collegiate game. He was an elite defender at Spanish Fork. Just you knew that, oh, my goodness, this guy could be your next shortstop. And Spanish Fork has been really good to us over the years with some really good players. And uh, and he's come in and, and earned a spot on the infield, and it's been fantastic to see so far. The batter, Ernie Yake, looks at strike one from McLaughlin. Oh, he took a pitch. <laughs> he's been <laughs> swinging away. A couple of first-pitch ground outs Yake's had today. BYU leading 7-1 to one in the season opener. One out, nobody on. The pitch to Yake. Ground ball once again to Pintar. Makes it look easy. Over to first for out number two. How many times do you think in his career Yake has had four ground outs to second base? He grounded out to second in the first inning. He did the same in the fourth, the same in the sixth, and now in the eighth. <laughs> and he is the best hitter on their team. That kid is unbelievable. You take it. He completely took over the series at our place last year when they when they beat us opening weekend. Brett Harris now the batter. Looks at ball one. BYU with eight hits. Gonzaga with five. Harris showed bunt, pulled it back. The pitch was called, strike one. Now one and one is the count to Harris. Brett Harris is flight out twice to right field and then grounded out to the shortstop. The one one pitch called strike two. Good slider. Laughlin looking to make quick work of the Zags here in the bottom of the eighth. Read ahead. One ball and two strikes. Two outs, nobody on. The one-two pitch to Harris. Struck him out looking. A little fist pump there from Reed McLaughlin. As he retires the Zags in the bottom of the eighth, we head to the top of the ninth. BYU on top, 7-1 to one on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. Tennessee's first pitch to Pintar, taken for ball one. The 1-0 pitch outside for strike one. One ball, one strike to Andrew Pintar. The freshman has had quite the debut in BYU Blue today. one in one pitch. Other than the little the freshman dirt. mistake, right? After the... Getting picked the, off. The bunt getting picked off. But uh, other than that, he's been really, really good defensively. Made every play. Had a big double. That really got that whole thing going. Yes, it did. The 2-1 pitch. Uh -oh. Andrew, he turns on that. That ball is hit deep down the left field line. Go around the pole. It had distance. It went around it, right? But <laughs> it was foul. Uh -huh. He turned on that pitch real quick. Like I said, it had the distance. It just kept going foul. The 2-2 pitch and goes the other way and fouls that out of play off to the right side. BYU leading 7-1. to We're in the top of the ninth. Cougars, while it's not a conference game, Maybe looking to send a little bit of a message to the team picked ahead of them in the preseason poll. Oh, wow. Have you pitch. ever seen that? I have never seen that. The bat a, a swing? Busted in half. It broke the bat of Literally Pintar. Literally busted in half. A metal bat busted in half. And the ball went about three feet in front of Andrew, and they threw him out at first. It's unbelievable. Rawlings, thank you for that. It's probably because it's that ugly red. That's why. Look. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I've it's never... only game one we're yeah. seeing incredible things. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. One out. Zach Peterson is the hitter. Looks at strike one. Swing and a foul. 
near the Gonzaga dugout for Petey. Now 0-2 to the BYU third baseman, Zach Peterson. Zach now a sophomore. Saw action last year as a freshman. The 0-2 pitch in the dirt for ball one. Swing and a miss, and Zach Peterson strikes out. The inside fastball, good location right there. Danny Jelilich will step into the batter's box with nobody on and two outs here in the top of the ninth inning. Danny with three strikeouts, but did earn a walk in the top of the eighth and would come around to score in the big eighth inning for the Cougars where they scored six runs. First pitch to Danny, low for ball one. Jelilich with a fly out to center field, and that'll retire the Cougars. One, two, three in the top of the ninth. BYU looking to close things out as they take a 7-1 lead to the bottom of the ninth in Arizona on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Jared Lesser in to pitch for the BYU Cougars here in the bottom of the ninth. Jared looking to close things out. Nice job by Justin Sterner, first and foremost, BYU starter tonight. Justin was fantastic, only gave up the one run. Reed McLaughlin came in, pitched very well. Sterner was six and a third. Gave up one earned run. Reed McLaughlin, one and two-thirds. Gave up only one hit. Had a strikeout. Now Jared Lesser comes in, and he's going to face a pinch hitter, Isaac Barrera, for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And they've got some work to do. 7-1 to one, BYU. First pitch from Jared. It's the outside corner for strike one. Barrera out of Kent, Washington, 5'6", 155-pound junior. The 0-1 pitch from Lesser, low, evens the count at one ball and one strike. Barrera into the lineup for Alex Brenner, who was a pinch runner, swing and a foul straight back. If the screen hadn't been here, I might have had a play on that ball. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. BYU leading 7-1 in the bottom of the ninth. Cougars looking to begin the 2020 season 1-0. Swing and a miss by Barrera. Ball gets away from Valdez. He's able to regroup, throw to first for the first out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ryan Sullivan will head to the plate for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Sullivan is struck out twice and flied out. First pitch from Lesser, taken for strike one. Again, BYU back at it tomorrow. They're the last game here in the stadium tonight, and the first one tomorrow of a doubleheader against the New Mexico Lobos tomorrow. 10 a.m. for the game for the first game, 3 p.m. Mountain Time for game number two. The 0-1 pitch in the dirt. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. We'll have both of those games for you. Here on the new skin BYU Sports Network, obviously an off day on Sunday, and then BYU will take on Oregon State, the host school, on Monday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Lesser gets the outside corner, and now ahead of Sullivan, one ball and two strikes. Line drive from Sullivan right at Zach Peterson who was in the right place at the right time and reacted quickly, stabbed at that ball for out number two. Nice job by Zach Peterson. The Zags down to their last out. 
BYU leading 7-1. to one. Facing the catcher, Stephen Lund. First pitch from Lesser. On its way. Called ball one. We'll have a player interview after tonight's game. Also hear from the head coach of the Cougars, Mike Littlewood. The 1-0 pitch taken for strike one. Now one ball and one strike. 91 mile an hour fastball from Lesser. The 1-1 pitch to Lund. Swing and a pop-up. It's drifting out of play near the right field stands. And Deming able to go over and glove it for the final out of the inning. And that's going to do it for BYU. A fantastic effort and catch by Austin Deming. And BYU begins the 2020 season with a victory over the Gonzaga Bulldogs by a final score of 7-1. to one. Fantastic way to begin the year for the BYU Cougars. So many new faces some of which made big, big plays for BYU tonight. They pick up a big win, start the season 1-0, and oh, defeating a conference rival in a non-conference game. Your final from Surprise, Arizona, 7-1. to one. We'll take a break. We'll come back and give you some of the stats and hear from players and coaches coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.